So, shalom lachem. So, you know, I would like uh, also to remind you that we, every minute we study Torah, is in honor of the IDF soldiers for their success and, of course, for the refuah shlema, all the soldiers right now, they injured in the hospital or home or rehab, wherever it is, mamash erna refana lahem. And of course, for all the kidnapped people that we are working diligently and intensively, but we are dealing with not human being, mamash not human being, so we don't know. One day yes, one day no. We have to continue to pray. Pray and study, you know, that Hashem will release them as soon as possible. We need siyata dishmaya. Okay. Shalom, shalom. So right now, as you know, we in the Torah, we have two times Ten Commandments. We are in Parashat Yitro and Parashat Vaithanan. And we have Zachor at Yom HaShabbat and we have Shamor at Yom HaShabbat. Remember the Shabbat and guard the Shabbat. Today, we will study what is remember the Shabbat. Okay? So this is, this is, uh, this uh, Muhammad Har Sinai, was, as you know, was very, very unique. Okay? And so, as you know also in Masachet Shabbat, page 86, the Torah itself also was giving on Shabbat. It was Yom Shabbat when we received the Torah. So it's not, and this is the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. It says, Zachor et Yom HaShabbat lekotsho. What is Zachor? Look line 12 in the Gemara. Zochreo al hayayin b'knisato. So when, when the husband, when the father is making Kiddush, this is Zochher, to remember. So when we make Kiddush, the Kiddush, you remember the Shabbat. So the Gemara asking, okay, only in the Balayla, by Yom Minayin, how do you know that during the day also we have to make Kiddush? As we Zachor et Yom HaShabbat, Yom, the day. So we, we have, of course, have to make Kiddush on Friday night, you know, and we have to make Kiddush on Yom HaShabbat itself also. Ben Ishai, he had something that we, I don't know if all the Sfaradim, but we, my parents, you know, my grandparents used to do before, before the Kiddush. So he said, let's say, Lekayem, line 18. Lekayem mitzvat aseh de Rabbanan. It's a positive mitzvah from the Rabbanan. What? Lekadesh alayayin. So to make Kiddush on wine is mitzvah mit Rabbanan. As our rabbi says from the Pasuk, line 19, Zachor et Yom HaShabbat lekotsho. Remember the sanctification of the Shabbat. Have you remember? Now listen to the words. Zochreu bidvarim haneemarim alayayin. What is bidvarim? Karakana dibur, words. So when you make the kiddush, you know, you make words. When you make fila, you make words. Dvarim, uh, not, dvarim could be things. But here in this case, dvarim is diburim, like aserta dibrot. When you make kiddush, you take out from your mouth words. When you sing Shabbat, you know, Shabbat songs. When you do dvar Torah, everything is, you know, bidvarim. But the main thing is the kiddush. The Kiddush, Zochreu Bidvarim. While the Taken Shoresh Mitzvah Zo be Makom Elyon. The moment you sanctify by Kiddush, you elevate the Shabbat up high, high, very high. But before Kiddush, we have another Mitzvah. What Mitzvah we have to do before Kiddush? Adlakat Nerot. So, before we are coming to Kadesh at the end of the Shabbat, before Kiddush, line 3, there is a mitzvah to bring the Shabbat to the Shabbat, before the Kiddush of the Shabbat. The Kiddush is after the Kiddush of the Shabbat. You know, but the Adlakat Nerot is before the Kiddush of the Shabbat. We'll see some differences. The topic of the Shiur today is the wonderful connection between the Kiddush and Adlakat Nerot. Okay? And we will see the differences and why the differences and the connection between two of them, and they're connecting. Kmo sheshaninu, Masachet Shabbat, page 34, ki achar advarim sheadam tzarich lomar betoch beto, I don't know if you know, there are three things we have to say before we go into Bet Knesset, 
עיסרתן, עירבתן, הדליקו את הנר. זה הצין במה מדליקין. הדליקו את הנר, so the father remind, you know, you have to light the candle. It's part of the משנה, ממש part of the משנה. So you see, it is very important to make הדלקת נרות before Shabbat. Now why? Why it's so important? It says in Eob, וידעת כי שלום אוהליך ופקדת נבכה ולא תחתה. What does that mean? Another פסוק, I will explain to you. ותזנח משלום נפשי נשיתי טובה, מאי ותנח משלום נפשי, אמר רבי אבאו זו הדלקת נר. You know what is the bottom line of these two פסוקים? Because said, הדלקת נרות היא איזה סגולה for שלום בית. It's שלום אוהליך. שלום אוהליך is peace in your tent. And then you know, so when you have שלום בית, not only you have שמחה in the house, you do not make sin usually. The שלום בית is protection for everything. שלום בית, you will see, is top, top priority. Now, we're going to מסכת שבת, page 23. Now I'm asking you a question. You have not enough money. Let's say we are poor. And we have now נר, it's חנוכה. Okay? Now I have money, I can afford to buy either נר של שבת or חנוכה. But I could buy only one of them. What, what should I buy? נר שבת, נכון? נר ביתו ונר חנוכה, נר ביתו עדיף. Why? משלום שלום בית. That's so important, שלום בית. So he said, if you don't have enough money, you have to make to buy first of all נרות שבת, and then you do the נרות חנוכה. Now another question. What if you don't have enough money to buy wine? either wine or נרות. Why נרות? The same reason. Look what he says. Line 19. נר ביתו וקידוש היום. נר ביתו עדיף. Your priority is the נר בית. Why? משום שלום בית. So look, שלום בית give you the priority. נרות שבת is more important than נרות חנוכה. and more important than Kiddush. Just look how important is the Adlakat Nerot Shabbat. Here, here is the Perush, what I explained to you now. Okay? So that's why if you want, in the Shulchan Aruch, the book of the Halakha, or a Haim page, you know the Siman 263, If you do not have enough money to buy both, נר שבת קודם, first נר שבת. וכן, אם אין ידו משגת לקנות נר שבת בחנוכה, you don't have enough money for שבת and חנוכה, נר שבת קודם. I quote you, read you שולחן ערוך, is the book of הלכה. That נר שבת קודם, why? The שולחן ערוך says, usually it doesn't say, give you a reason. משום שלום בית. Even רבי יוסף קארו, in שולחן ערוך, say, Why? The end shlom bayit below ner. Because if you do not have light in the house, you do not have shlom bayit. Also, not only shulchan aruch, before shulchan aruch Rabbi Yosef Karo was Rambam. Rambam wrote this in Ilkhot Hanukkah, okay? in Perek Dalet, the fourth one. Look here, he said, line 16. היה לפניו נר ביתו ונר חנוכה, או נר ביתו וקידוש היום, נר ביתו קודם משום שלום בית. You see, my dear friend, what I'm giving you, שולחן ערוך, and רמב״ם, in order to show, there is no dispute on this. There is no מחלוקת. Everybody agree that נר שבת is first, top priority. Either חנוכה or קידוש. Even, you know, that, you know, uh, what if the husband suspect his wife, that his wife is with another man? And she denies. You know what we're doing? Sota. Sota. What we do with Sota? We give her to drink. So ah, we give her to drink, you know, but said, also, why the name of God disappeared? They put the Megillah, disappeared. Why? To make Shlom Bait Ben Ish Lishto. Hashem said, Tech, you know, he said, you know, you have to make Shlom Bait is priority number one. Because if the woman, Has Shalom, did have somebody that she's impure. She cannot go to her husband anymore. She must divorce. 
but if not, if she is pure, and it was just out of jealousy from the husband, you know, we have to make everything, you know, to make shalom bite. You know, that the met derech, you know, for our life is shalom. Now, the question is, who has the obligation to light Nerot Shabbat? The wife or the husband? The wife. The wife, the wife and, and if the wife is cannot, the, the man can light also. So who has the obligation? The wife. Uh, the, whoever said both is right. But even so, you know, the obligation to light Shabbat candle is muteled gamma la ish. Not only the woman. This obligation is for the men as well. But you, exactly like the Isha. Uh, look what it says in Shulchan Aruch. Ehad anashim ve'ehad anashim Either men and women, hayavim liyot bevatehem ner daluk v'shabbat. The obligation for both of them to make adlakat nerot v'shabbat. Afilu en lo ma yochal. Let's say you're so poor, you don't have something to eat. Even before you eat, it light candles. Before the bread. Before the challah. Even you go beg, knock door of your neighbors, ask tzedakah. But you know, this tzedakah you can take and buy the first thing you buy candles. That's what we call Onek Shabbat. However, we know, you and me, that who is lighting the candle, the woman or the man? The woman. The woman. Look line 9. Ulaam min hag Yisrael Torahu ki ha'isha hi shemadleket et nerot dechvot Shabbat. That even if the husband is home, when the light, when she the lighting candle for Shabbat, it's min hag and min hag is mamash halacha, that you let the priority is the woman. You will see in a few minutes why. Why she has the priority to light the candles. If the obligation is for the man, so what difference does it make? No. He said the minhag is that the woman should light the candle. Why? Do you know why? Because of Sarai Menu. Sarai Menu? What Sarah? Didn't she uh, light candles and it, it would last for the whole week? Uh, I, I tell you, you said Sarai Imenu, I'll give you something else, go different direction. It's because of Chava Imenu. We have, we, have, okay. we have two reasons why the woman should light the candles. First of all, who is home most of the time, men or women? The woman, she's in the kitchen, she's home. I said, because you know that the woman is dealing with the house, more more than the husband. That's why you said they we give the priority. But Ma, I want you to know the second reason, which is the most important. I said, I feel Ma, if the husband will tell his wife, let me do it today. No, I feel him yirzel abal adlik ba'atzma isha kodemet. Mean even the halacha, I have the obligation. My wife has the priority to light the candle more than me, in spite of the fact that I have the obligation as well. So it's clear? Now, now I would like to, I to you said Sarai Menu. I tell you Chava Menu. What Chava did? Sin. Sin. What sin she did? She and not only she did the sin, not only she made the sin, she made her husband make the sin as well. That's right. Now, when the husband made the sin also, the neshama, you know, there is the neshama is like a light. And you know what he says? She turned off the light of the world. Haisha kipta neroshel olam. Okay, look here, the quote of Magen Avraham. Shanashim adlekot v'od mipne shaisha kipta neroshel olam. She turned off the light, the candle of the world. Mipne shaisha kipta neroshel olam. She made her husband make the sin. Because she said, Now his neshama is like a candle. The moment that the Adam make the sin, it's, you know, his neshama was off. Like darkness inside his system. There is a pasuk. 
נר אלוקים נשמת אדם. The candle of God is the soul of a human being. That means the moment that we make sin, you know what happened to us? The neshama is off. Darkness. Darkness coming inside our system. And who caused this? Chava. Because Chava, so because she did, now what, so what Chava is doing by lighting candles? Is nafkamina for you, for Friday. You know what you have to think? Tikkun. Tikkun for what? For the first sin that she made. Because that means Adlakat Nerot is Tikkun Lechet Shel Adam Arishon Vechava. So that's why, because now the woman said, I'm giving you the second reason. The second reason why the woman is priority, because she made the sin, she initiated the sin, and because she turned off the light of the world, she has to fix it. Now she creates light. And between you and me, when, you know, when we, the husband, when we see the light, when the woman, you know, closing her eyes and make bracha, is give, giving light to our neshama when we go into Bet Knesset. Before we go into Bet Knesset, we see the light of the candle, you know, like she is not only turning out physically the candles, she is turning out the neshama of her husband. Because she is the one that turned off the light of the husband in the... In the Seventh day of the creation, the sixth day. That says him said, he look it's a midrash, another midrash. He kiptan eroshel adam. The woman turned off the light of the of Adam. It says ner Hashem nishmat adam. Candle of Hashem is the soul of human being. Lefikach, therefore tishmor adlakat nerot. That's the reason. See. Also the Midrash, everybody say the same reason. If you follow me from the beginning of the Shi'ur, we did not see any dispute. All the rabbis agree. All the rabbis agree that, you know, that the candle is the men and women, both of them is the obligation. However, the top priority is for the woman because she turned off the light of the world. However, my dear friend, Tell me, the man doing nothing? He, he also made sin. He's doing the kiddush. For, uh, take about the... Your, wait, we're going, you're going to one step ahead. I would like now with the candles. The husband can share with the woman? Yes. What? Yes. Very good. The husband fixing the candles. He put the candles and he took the wicks and make them light that when the woman is coming, she's only turning off the light, you know, the fire, and she's making. The candle should be ready. So the husband is also part of this because the husband is also part of the scene. You know, in spite of the fact that he, it's not, he did not initiate the scene, but he did participate in the scene. So he's also doing something. So look here, Hari. הקדוש, line 8, מכל מקום האיש יתקן הנרות. יתקן, what is לתקן? To fix. He used the word לתיקון, like תיקון עולם. You know, he has also to be part of the תיקון. So now it's harmony between men and women, husband and a wife, that she lights the candle and he fix the candle, and both of them making תיקון for the first thing they have made in the creation of the world. Is it clear? It's clear, but I don't know any man that does that. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, what, what is it? I'm not aware of any man that sets up the candles for his wife. No, so, there's many. Yes. You see, Elena, yes. Leona, you see me? Are you see me? I am one of them. How do you know? How do you know? The only, the only man you see is your husband. So how do you know what the other husband doing? No, no, I, 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 I don't know. Ah, you don't know. But I don't know. But, no, I tell you something, Leona. It's better not to make idea of this because after Salon Bay, I tell you something, Leona, but you're right. You're right. Many husbands do not. But they don't do it not because they don't want. They 
Because they, they don't know. I tell you, many times I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> My wife, God bless her. She, you know, the kinder ready from Wednesday night. You know, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot be ahead of her. With nothing, I cannot be ahead of her. The shulchan, you know, the table of table. If for us Thursday morning, it's uh, you can see our table is ready, with the candlestick, everything is ready. But sometimes I said, let me do it. Give me the school, the merit to do it. But you know, sometimes I do. Sometimes you know, she has no patience for me. <laughs> but but you're right because many people do not know. That's why we have to study. So if you tell nicely. You know, the husband should be happy to be part of it. You know, but he said, ah, you give me another job now. Not to take it in a <laughs> negative way. Not to get the, you know, the, the husband should know the power of the mitzvah. is a mitzvah gdola. It's not to wash the floor or to wash the dishes. This is only to fix the candle, that's all. Because I know many people said, what? Another job, I have enough. I asked my friend, what do you have? When I told him, what do you have to do? He said, I have to put the garbage. You know, take the, uh, that's said. So now, in spite of the garbage, the opposite. You know, the garbage is stink, but the candle of Shabbat is holy. So deal with this. So I, I just want to ask, who is it that says that the men should set up the? Uh, yeah, it's not obligation, but he should. No, no, just, just It's recommend. Yeah, I would say it's more recommendation. You know, for the husband, if the husband want to be part of it. He can be easily part of it. He can be part of it. But sometimes the husband coming back late, he's going to take a shower, going this, he's, you know, he's in a hurry to be Knesset. So we're not going to wait for him because the, the time is, it depends on the situation. Make it, make it on Thursday. Huh? Ah. No, don't. So. Now, Malka, don't talk. Uh, Udi can help you. If you want, I will, spoke, I will speak to him. Now, because after the woman is the So now he has opportunity to be part of the mitzvah as well. Now we have to say, Nashim tzadkaniyot madikot anerot leShabbat. Nachon. Now, after you light the candle, what the husband is doing? Going to bet knesset. Nachon. When he's coming from bet knesset, who is coming with him? Angels. The two angels, remember, the home, the children and the two angels. Two angels, Shnei Malachim, escort him to the house. Why? To listen to the Kiddush. Now, you see, you said at the root, you said before Kiddush. Now we're going to the Kiddush. Okay? Look, Orachayim, and the rabbi says, I never knew when I was a little boy, you know, when I was mamash in my childhood, my father always, when he started to make Kiddush, he looked with his eyes to the candles. Every time, every time he started the Kiddush, Yom HaShishi Vayichulo HaShamayim, he's looking to the candles. Now, when you see the source, you see why. Look, I'm going to read to you, line three. Uchshematchil, when you start the Kiddush, Yiten Enab Banerot. He has to put his eyes to the candle. Uvishata Kiddush because shall bracha. And when he makes Borepriya Gefen, also he has to look at the candles. Here, what he's doing it, he makes connection. He tied the Kiddush to Adlakat Nerot. You know, you will see in a few minutes why. We have now to understand what is the connection between Kiddush, Alayain, to Adlakat Nerot. Why I have to look? By looking at the candle during the Kiddush, I tie them up together. And you remember that the Kiddush Alayan Bel Shabbat. We said the candles is for the first sin. Nahon? What about the Kiddush? For what is this? Tikkun for what? Also for the first sin. Both of them is for. So both of them under the same umbrella. I make Tikkun by Adlakat Nerot and I make Tikkun also by Kiddush. This and this, and we talk step by step, and you understand very well why Kiddush is also. Do you remember what the fruit he ate, Adam and Chava, Chava and Adam? Rimun. 
What? Who told you etrog? I'm glad you said etrog and not apple. Because the, because the kindergarten teacher told us the apple, the puach. But the Gemara give us four options. One of them is a trog, one of them is te'ena, one of them is wheat, hita, and the main thing is grapes. Most of the sages said anavim, gefen. Look here, line 12, Rabbi Meir Omer, gefen haya. That means grapes. She'er lecha davar she'mebi yelala. What happens if you drink too much wine? You start to be balagan, you know? You start to be mixed up your mind. Shemevi yelala ala adam ala yain. Yain, on one side, when we mention wine, is the context, you know, the connotation. Is is negative or positive? Positive. Not negative? Well, it depends on how... Oh, depends. Depends what they use, the yain. So he said, Hashem said, hey, three people, one of them is uh, drunk people. More than the sinner. You know why? The sinner knows he's making a sin. The shikor, the drunk man doesn't know he's making a sin. So he cannot make tshuva. So, but, but we make, you know, on the other side, we make kiddush. You know, we make kiddush. Everything is with wine. Sheva brachot, chatan vekala. We all think we make mind. Many people in Birkat Amazon, they make another bracha. Bore Priya Gefen. So it said, you know, Sheneemar vayesht min hayayin vayishkar. It says he drank from the wine and he got drunk. It said, Bereshit. It said, Bereshit vatikah mi piryo vatokhal. Now, take, now it's grapes. You know what Chavad did? She took from the fruit and she ate. Now, what do you have in mind? When you see these three words, she took the grapes and had the grapes. That's all. No, 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 no. She, Amar Abiyabo, Sahata, she squeezed the grapes. When you squeeze the grapes, what you get? Wine. Wine. The question is if the yain is kasher or not kasher. <laughs> you know what? When yain is kasher, when you go to the supermarket and buy wine, what wine you said? You said cooked wine? Yain mevushal or yain lo mevushal? Both. Both of them are kasher. But what is more protected? Mevushal. Mevushal, even if a goy, if it's not mevushal, if goy touch it, is yain nesech. If it's not mevushal. Now, from here we learn the yain mevushal and not mevushal. When she took the grapes, the grapes were not cooked yet. You know what is boser? Boser, it means when the fruit is not ready to eat. Okay? It's not well done. Sometimes we are such in a hurry, we take the sense, it's called boser in Hebrew. Boser. Yes. So he said, he said, when he said that you don't eat when the group, the orange, the same thing, every fruit. You do not eat if it's not ready to eat. That's called lo muhan. It's not ready. It's lo me, the lo muhan. Yain, he said lo mevushal. So now, when she took the anavim, the grapes, it was in ve boser. Means not well done. That means not cooked. Who is the first one that touched the grapes? No. Nahash. Remember, he pushed her to the trees. And he touched, he said, you see, I touched the tree. When the moment he's a goy or yudi? He's a goy. So what he did, so what Chava drank, she drank an, an avim nesech, yai nesech. Not only the fruit she not allowed to, from here, by the way, this is the source to learn about yai nesech. That's the source. We said, but she sahata and she gave it to him. Not only she drank, she gave it to her husband. You know what? Now, listen, Or Haim Akados said, unbelievable. If this fruit, the forbidden, the prohibition to eat, it's forever or only for its one time shot? You know what I'm saying? I'm asking? If Hashem said, don't eat from the fruit, it's only for today or forever? That's the question. 
So look, he said, Amru Zichronam Livracha Arsegis. She even had a mountain at Arab Shabbat. It was Friday, nachon. If he would wait to Friday night, Hashem would tell him to make kiddush al ayin. He prevent kiddush because he drank before. You should not drink on Yom Shishi. You should drink on Friday night, and that's what that mean. He said Hashem did not want to tell them it's forbidden forever. He said, yeah. I just want you to be careful not to drink it now or not to eat it now. But they goofed big time. I have a question, Rabbi. Yes? The snake touched the grape, not the wine. And Hava uh, pushed and made the juice, not the wine. She she squeezed the grapes. Yes. According to Rabbi Avin, when you squeeze the grapes, you get liquid. Yes. So this liquid is called wine, Nahon. And that's what she said. She squeezed juice, Nahon. But this juice is different than orange juice. You know what the different? When you make when you take orange, what the bracha on the orange? No, the orange, not orange juice. Bore When you eat when you eat the fruit, I'm not talking the juice. Every fruit you make it liquid is more important or lower or not less important? Less, less important. That's why the bracha changed from Bore Priyavayetz to Sheakol. Only one fruit, when you make it liquid, is higher. Is grapes. Grapes from, you know, when you make grapes, is Bore Priyavayetz. But when you drink the wine, is Bore Priyavayetz. So it's higher. So Anavim is very, you know, very unique. And but that's what is... The, the grapes were touched by the snake when they were still grapes, not juice. Can, but he touched the grapes. The moment touched the grapes, you cannot make. You cannot make it wine. He ah, make okay. it impure already. The yeah. moment he touched it. But that's a leaf. Yes. She made, she made a thing without knowing. Can, you can say without... But you know, I, I'll tell you on one foot, quick, because you have a good question. Before they ate, did they make any sin? No. No. How do they know what, what, what's good, what's not good? Because, only the, 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 because God prohibited the story. No, b before, before, even before, before, before the story of uh, the fruit. Did they make any sin? No, who told them? Now, listen, the snake, the snake told them, if you eat the fruit, you will know you'll be able to distinguish between bad and good. Okay? So if you eat the fruit and you know to distinguish between good and bad, what was before they ate? What's so bad to know to distinguish between good and bad? All what we're doing in all our life, teaching our children to distinguish between good and bad. So what's so bad about this? The snake is the, the snake is right. He said the moment you eat the fruit, you know what what was if you know what is good, what is bad after the fruit, what was before? Now listen, Malka, listen carefully to my answer. They did not know, but they felt what is good, what is bad. The Torah was built in. If they would not make the sin. You didn't need, we didn't need the Torah. The Torah was built in and he knew, he felt. You see the Chazir, you know you don't eat Chazir. Okay, you see this, you don't eat. They did it by feeling, not by knowing. Now after you eat the fruit, you have to know. In order to know, you have to study. So you have to study a lot. Why we are studying? You know, we are studying. Could you imagine if Adam and Chava would not make the sin? With the studying, the Torah was built in inside our system. So we know immediately or automatically what is good, what is bad. But now since the sin, now we have to distinguish between bad and good. That's why, Malka, you said before, the, the Chava did not know. She did not know what she felt. The fruit was a one-time shot. So according to the rules, she can eat grapes. Grapes is kosher. But Hashem said, it was a test. It was a test. He said, don't eat from this fruit. But it, you'll see. Now I'll give you now 
I'll give you now a fable, a metaphor, beautiful metaphor, Rabbi Yitzhak. You ready? Now, when he said, who is the first one that Hashem asked, why did you, what did you eat? Who Hashem approached first? Adam. 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 But who Hashem should come first? Chava. Chava. Why he came to Adam? Now listen, Lama. Why he came to Adam? The woman that you gave me. What? He <laughs> said that the, the, the son that, uh, that you gave me, made me, gave me. Ah, <laughs> Peseder, Peseder. Okay, wait two minutes. There is something what you say. The, the metaphor is like this. Melech, the king, said to his slave, I said, I'm going to take a shower, okay? I don't test nothing until I come back. Clear instruction? Yes. Clear. Amrano Ishto, now his wife cooked something for lunch. He said, my dear husband, please taste, you know, something from what I cooked. Okay? Just tell me if it's good or not. Now, can he taste or not? Can, but he, but what what the king said to him? Don't taste. Don't taste. His wife. Now, who is higher? The wife or the king? The king. The king. Now, the wife said, just taste a little bit. I don't know if it's salty or not salty. Please, please, taste it. Ba Melech, the king came from the shower. And he see that the man is, is tasting the food. Amar lo Melech, the Melech said to him, Lo Amar Tilcha Al Tochal? I did, didn't I say to you, don't eat, and you eat? What did he say to him? My wife. My wife gave it to me. So what the king said to him? You make a sin. Who is higher, your wife or me? I said, if you know, said if your father or your mother say drive on Shabbat, make Hilul Shabbat, and he said honor your father and your mother, should you listen to him? No. no. Why? Hashem, Hashem told me not to make Hilul Shabbat. Hashem is higher. He is the father of my parents too. Now he said, you know, he said, what? Are you listening to your wife more than me? Now you see, that's the metaphor. What is the real case? What, the, what Adam said, why did he eat? Because Adam ate it. You gave me this wife. And she told me to eat. And what, Adam, what Hashem said to him? What, what I said to you. Because you listen to your wife, that means, don't be insulted, my dear friends. But not always is good to listen to the wife. If the wife telling husband to do something bad against Hashem, is like the son, like Mekhilul Shabbat. He said, you cannot violate Hashem just to get for Shlom Bayit, for Shlom Bayit. No, no. Hashem is Shlom Bayit. If Hashem said, don't Mekhilul Shabbat. And that's, he said, Amar lo Kadosh Baruch Hu, this is the tree I told you clear. And now you listen, you know, to your wife, that your wife is my maid, and you listen to her. So that means, the husband is also part of the sin or not? Yes. He is part of the sin as well. He is not high like his wife, but he's part of the sin. Hashem told him clear not to eat. Look, he said, the woman, the wife that you gave it to me, she gave me from the tree and I ate. Amar lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu, ve'lehava shamata yoter mimeni? You listen to Hava more than me? Immediately he kicked him out from Gan Eden. He lost big time. Now, I'm asking you, now listen to the deep of the metaphor, the depth. What the king said to the slave? Let's be careful. What did he say? Don't eat until when? Until I'll be back, Nahon? Don't eat until I'll be back. That means don't eat forever or just for a while? For a while. Just from the metaphor we understand, the grapes should is not like a trafe. It's not like chazir. Just now, just now, until I will change the rules, don't eat from this. 
from from the metaphor we understand that he said that's why Rabbi Abau said if he will not do it in the night Hashem will say now make grapes and make kiddush he missed the kiddush because he goofed because he ate so so wine is not rave but it's just sometimes said for a while you cannot eat who not allowed to drink wine today uh, Nazir, 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 not allowed to drink wine. So there are some people not allowed, but that's different halachot. Now, after we know that the woman fixing the head, the sin of, you know, the fruit, during the Kadlakat Nerot, and now we said, we came to conclusion, the men also part of the sin. So how the men making t- tikkun? <laughs> By the Kiddush. So now it's beautiful Shlom Bayit. Well, how do you see Shlom Bayit? The wife doing her job and the man doing his job. But both of them do, together is under the same umbrella. It's to make Tikkun for the same sin. He's not telling her it's your fault. And she's not telling him it's your fault. They said, okay, we, we goofed. Let's make Tikkun together. That's why the, uh, the husband doing Kiddush and the wife doing Adlakat Nerot. So, Zachor, at Yom HaShabbat Lekadcho, Zochreu Alayayin. We have to remember, to remember what we have done. Dirshu, Zachor, at Yom HaShabbat, Zochreu Mahar Shebal Ashkeho. Because all what the snake wanted, us to forget about Shabbat, to forget about prohibition. And now the, the, the wine, if you eat, if you drink the right dose, not to be shikor, that's the opposite. You remember. You do not forget. If you drink too much, you forget. But if you drink according, you know, the halakha, you know, so if you did drink according to the halakha, you will be in good shape and you remember Shabbat and never forget about Shabbat. you told before that if, if Habad brings the, the wine, the use of the grape in Shabbat, something different will happen. Uh, explain, explain it a little bit better. Well, what, say it again, that I've said what, that if you... If this happens in Shabbat, things will be different, you thought. No, I said if you would not sin, make sin, these grapes will be ready until, you remember, minute over there is not like one minute here, until the Friday night. It was Friday during the day. Until Friday night, Hashem would tell him, take groups that well done, cooked, make wine, and now you're allowed to do it. And now you do a mitzvah. So some, remember, what is a sin? What is a mitzvah? Sin is when Hashem said, don't do it. Mitzvah is when Hashem said, do it. The only thing is a commandment from God. Yeah? So Niratam, he said, you know, look. So conclusion. The tree, the fruit that Adam ate was geffen, was grapes. And because of the woman, she turned off the light of the of the world. As it says in Masechet Shabbat, page 32, 32, is expression, my dear friend, Try to remember this. Ha'isha chava kipta neroshel olam means the woman, the chava, turn off the light, the candle of the world. Why we say candle of the world? You know why? The candle of a man, of her husband. We said the neshama is a candle, nachon. So why say candle of the world? Why not candle of her husband? There was only them. I thought you're going to say it. But we learned something, Martha. What? What, Malka? Oh, no. so who is inside Adam? All the Neshamot. Kol Kol Olam. The entire world. That means the Neshama of Adam are shown the Neshama of the entire world. That's why he said, Kipta Neroshel Olam. Not Neroshel Adam. Neroshel Olam, that the light of the entire universe was off. What a sin. What a mistake. Yeah. Because of the tree of knowledge, you know, that's the main cause 
for the light to be off. V'nelekach, because of this, we make Kiddush on the Yain. Why? To fix the sin of Adam HaRishon, because the Adam HaRishon made the sin with Geffen. So now, the candle of the woman is what? Because she turned off the light. Now, the Kiddush is what? Because of the grapes. That's why we make Borei Priya Geffen. So you see the grapes and candle. So the woman in charge of the Hadlakat Nerot and the man in charge of uh, Kiddush, of Borei Priya Geffen. Now you see, step by step, we understand the whole picture. Now you see, do you remember, I told you, when he makes the Kiddush, he has to look at where? To look at the candles. We say, Yom HaShishi has to look at the candle. By this he connects. He said, my wife, my holy wife, my tzedeket wife, she already started to make tikkun before Kabbalah Shabbat, before Shabbat, and now I compliment her. How I compliment her? I make the Kiddush. Because the sin was light, and was grapes, geffen. That's why he made Bore Priya geffen, and she made Ladlik Nerot Shel Shabbat. Now, million dollars question. Martha, not only cappuccino. <laughs> million dollars question. What is the difference between Adlakat Nerot and Kiddush? Now we saw the connection. What? Ah, okay, that, that they said, said that, that technically it's before Shabbat, you're right. He said, but the essence. The light. No, but the light the is light. only during Kiddush. I said the difference between. I'm talking now. Okay, I'll give you now. I'm what going to lead you. Do? I want you to come to this conclusion before I turn off the page. We are in page 10 already. We have only 25 pages. To, what? The Nero is spiritual. And the, yam and the Kiddush what? Is, uh, Are you trying to tell candle? The candle I don't eat, but the, the wine I drink. That's what I'm trying to say? Yeah, that's technically you're right. But I say, <laughs> I tell you what, you are women, and I'm sure that each one of you and your children also, your daughters, everybody make Adlakat Nerot. Even many, especially after Simchat Torah, you have to understand, after what happened in with Hamas, many people took, you know, Shabbat. Adlakat Nerot. Even people not keeping Shabbat, but Adlakat Nerot, many women took upon themselves to make Adlakat Nerot the Shabbat. That's very, very... I came, I was this Shabbat with my son in Efrat. I gave them the drasha on Shabbat, and then what I found out uh, when I came home, the rabbi told me, you know, that he asked from every woman in Efrat to light 10 minutes before Adlakat Nerot time, to add 10 more minutes, and to give, take name, take a name of one of the kidnapped people, and, you know, pray for this man or woman to be released. You know, I know my wife, my, my daughter-in-law, Okay, always one minute before, two minutes before Adlakat Nerot, she takes the Nerot and she lights the candles. Okay? This time, I never understood. I said, I pay attention. She make it much earlier, you know, more than 10 minutes before. I did not understand why. And then I asked, after I heard from the rabbi, I asked her, what are you doing? He said, the rabbi asked from each woman to make 10 minutes, but everybody get a name. And listen to this. That's the interesting I said, what, what, uh, what, uh, you took men or women? He said, they gave me name of woman. What's her name? He said, Ma Buskila. You know, Buskila, we were laughing. You know why Buskila, we were laughing? Because that's the last name of my wife. Wow. <laughs> so, I said, wow. and it's coincidence. She said, yeah, Buskila. You know, he said, he said, he said, he said but, but you see, Shabbat, every Adlakat Nerot is Mamash Tikkun. So maybe by this Tikkun, Hashem will help us even more to release these people, the kidnapped people. But I tell you what, I, I, I would like to lead you to the answer I'm waiting for. When you, when you make Adlakat Nerot, tell me how many people can hear you? Nobody. Only, 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 only. 
Yeah, are you making loud or quietly? Quietly. Quietly. And how you light the candle? Candles or with oil? Oil. 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 Oil is the best. You know why? Oil. When you when you when you pour oil, is whispering is quietly or make noise like water? Quietly. Quietly. If you pour oil, the oil. So the whole symbol, the whole essence of the woman is quiet. Okay? Now, when the man make kiddush, he make it quietly or loud? Loud. 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 That's what I meant. Tell me the difference between the kiddush and the candles. The candles, now the woman, she's taking the candles and she make it very quietly. Some she put their hands on their eyes. And sometimes only herself can hear herself. You know, not even one next to her. Very quietly. And she makes it with oil. And it's everything represents quietly. And the man is making loud that everybody can hear him. He said, Bore Priya Geffen. Yom HaShishi. You know, say, now, another, the, so this, this question is, is, is clear. This uh, statement, that explanation is clear. I'm asking you now, why? How, who convinced Chava to eat the fruit? Uh, How the snake was so sneaky and very successful to, to, set, up a, to set her up, to fail her? It, it was, what, what he did? What the Nahash did? You know what he did? He started to talk to her about the fruit, not the fruit that Hashem said, other fruit about the trees, about the view. He started to talk to her. When he talked to her, she talked to him. What he wanted to lead her for this tree, tree of knowledge. When he came to the tree of knowledge, he said, what about this fruit? And then slowly, slowly. So really, the main scene of the woman, why? She talked too much. Don't take it personally. She talked too much to the snake. If she would tell him, get lost, the first minute, she would not make the scene. But he took her slowly, slowly, and he spoke to her, and she spoke to him back. And now, what's, what the tikkun for talking too much? Quietly. Quietly. Many women, you know what many women doing? Tani dibur. When some people say, oh my gosh, I make talk Lashon around, I have to make tani. You know what is tani dibur? Yes, yes. So she tani dibur, tani dibur. So you know, is is tikkun for lashon hara. Now Hashem, Hashem said, you want to make tikkun, make the opposite. Now what is now who is this fault that his wife was talking too much to the nahaj? Who who was who was supposed to tell his wife to tell her stop it? Adam, Adam. Adam, but don't you see that your wife's talking too much? No, so Adam should what? Should say to his wife, you know, don't talk to him. He's the Satan. Don't talk to the snake. You're talking too much to keep her, to make her quiet. And what he did? He did not say one word to his wife. So what did he call of Adam? <laughs> to, to be loud or to be quiet? Loud. Ah, to be loud. You see what a beautiful harmony we have here. The wife is making tikkun because she was talking too much and too loud. If she would not talk to the snake, she said, you know, when you make adlakat nerot, give it the nerot, you know, because of this, you have to be to do it quietly. That's why oil is the best. Oil is also represent quiet. And now, Adam, why you didn't teach your wife not to talk to her? You also, you had to prevent her not to talk because you were too quiet. Now you make Kiddush loud. Now, Martha, you understand why the topic? Remember what the topic of the Shiur? Yes. <laughs> the connection. Sorry, when we make uh, the when we light the candles, we don't Okay, you don't have to say loud, quietly. Not to whisper, but you said, if your children next to you, they can hear. There is no, but she, you don't have, like you say, you know, the husband, we make kiddush, 
He has to make it loud. He cannot whisper to himself. Otherwise, you're not Yotze. Everybody should hear the Kiddush. But when, he, when the wife is doing the bracha, she says, Baruch Atah Hashem, Hashem Kichan, Tzvanur, Latin Dar Shabbat. You know, many, many, many women that put their eyes, their, their hands on their eyes, on the face, and do it very quietly, by nature. Follow all the women. And they don't know why. But I'm telling you now, we learn today, why? Your husband would be happy to hear this. <laughs> said, but I'd say, you never let him be said, but he said, it's your fault. Because he didn't teach me. Now we go into another beautiful sugya. The another person said, you know, in Beta Mikdash, who was working inside the Beta Mikdash? Kohanim and who else? Kohen Ko- 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 Gadol, Kohanim, Kohen Gadol, and who else? Leviim. Nachon, very good. We have Kohanim and Leviim. Do you know the difference between Kohanim and Leviim? Listen to the difference. After we have the strong foundation that we just have learned, Zira Kadosh Baruch Hu Aharon Uvanava Kohanim. Hashem said to Aharon, Yain Veshechar Al Test. When you go out to worship God in Bet Hamikdash in the Mishkan, you're not allowed to drink wine. Ata Uvanecha, you and your children, Bevochem El Oel Moed. When you enter to Oel Moed, do not drink wine. Why? When you worship God, you can bring it, you can worship God by two different liquid. You know why? What? One liquid is called the ayin, and the other liquid is called shemen. You know what is shemen? Oil. The oil. oil. Two different view, value to worship God. Hayayin, what's the difference between yayin and shemen? You know, Hayain Uremez al Abadat Hashem Begalui Vekol. When you drink wine, can you control your mouth? <laughs> Not really. No. Can? So it said Hayain, that means when you worship God with sound revealed, is not quietly, is not hidden. Yain represents to worship God revealed and loud. Because there is a klal, a rule in the Masachet Aruvin in the Gemara. Nichnas yayin, yatsa sod. Nichnas yayin, yatsa sod. Can you explain to me this sentence, this statement? I know you know it very well. I understood by the pshat, if you drink too much wine, what eventually happened to us? I discover all my secret. Nachon? Today, yes, today you will learn something amazing. Forget about this pshat. Because you enter wine, you take out sod. Okay? By the way, what the gematria of yain? Yud yud is 20, nun is 50. 50 and 20, how much is it? 70. 70. How much is sod? Samech is 60, vav is 6, dalet is 4. 4 and 6, 10, 10 and 6, 60, 70. Yain equals sod, 70, 70. By the way, you know, I don't know, beside Martha, I don't know who is other, there is more Ashkenaziot here. We have any other Ashkenaziot? By the way, if I am a guest, if I am a guest in uh, Ashkenazic home, and should I make Kiddush for me, or the host will make Kiddush for me? So I tell, Friday night, I always ask if I am a guest, if I am with Ashkenazim, to make Kiddush for myself. Why? Shabbat, the day, I don't have to. But Friday night, I have to. You know why? Yom HaShishi. Nachon? What after Yom HaShishi you do? Bracha, Bore Priya Geffen. After Bore Priya Geffen, what? You drink? Yes. No. No, no. Another Bracha. Baruch Atah Hashem, Mekadesh HaShabbat. No, before Amotzi. No, no. We have, we have Yom HaShishi, okay? we have Bore Priya Geffen, and then we have Baruch Atah Hashem, Mekadesh HaShabbat. We have paragraph, a Geffen, and another paragraph. Do you know how many words we have in Yom HaShishi? I'll tell you, don't start to count. Okay? It's going to take forever. 
Yom HaShishi, we have 30 word, 35 words. 35. 35. In Mekadesh HaShabbat, how many I have? 35 words. Wow, 70. 70 words. 70. The Ashkenazim has more than 35. Because they have extra paragraph. Kivanu baharta v'otanu kidashta. Mikol amim. Okay? This, the Sfaradim do not say. So that's why if you are Sfaradi, you have to make exactly 70 words. The Ashkenazim has different halakha. That's, they have to follow their halakha. But everybody is kiddush is kosher. I'm not saying chas v'shalom is not kosher. Everybody is good. But just to show you what is yain, what is sod. Shayain mevatel et asod umotziyo begaloi. If you drink wine, you nullify the secret, and then you take out the sod outside of your system. That's the pshat. Okay? Said. Now, when you start to sing on Shabbat, is mitzvah to sing or not? Yes. Yes. And you know why you, it's good to drink wine? When you drink wine, not too much, again, with the right doses, said, when you drink wine, you are inspired, you have motivation, you have mood to, to drink, to sing Shire Shabbat. And said, En omrim shira ela alayayin. Usually when you have nice singing, it's because of the wine. Ki ayayin gorem liftoh etapeh, because the yayin caused the mouth to be open. Not open to talk lashon ara has shalom, to be open to sing for in honor of Hashem. But what is the shaman doing? The opposite. The shaman is working Hashem, worshipping God quietly. But when you pour shaman from one kli, one vessel to another vessel, you will not hear any voice. You will not hear any voice. But this is, you know, when you pray to Hashem, what is the, which part of your body is the most important? Your lips, your mouth, I want another part, another organ. The heart. The heart. Lev. Avodat alev. Avodat alev. So when you really, it's when you're working with the lev, it's very quietly, it's side inside. So look, yayin represent when you, you have to do loud, to sing and etc. But the shaman is quietly. It's only avodat alev. Yes, avodat alev. Yes, avodat apeh. Sometimes during the mouth, sometimes during the heart, the heart. Now, do you know the difference between Kohanim and Leviim? Uh, what are the Kohanim not allowed to do? Drink wine. To drink wine. So they're working what? Quietly or loud? Huh? They're working quietly. quietly. Yes. Now the Leviim, what are the Leviim doing in Beta Migdash? They sing. They're singing. <laughs> Because if you want to sing, what do you have to do? To drink wine. And how the Aaron Akon, how they light the candles of the menorah? With what? With shaman. The oil, the shaman. And now the Levim drink yain, and then the shaman. The shaman, so the Kohanim represent the woman, and the Levim represent the men. And now we have combination of, of yain and shaman, wife and husband. Beautiful worshiping God. Beautiful harmony. All this, what I'm saying, you know, I'm moving forward, I explain to you. I don't... Okay. I, I have here, I hope I didn't skip it to see, because remind me to tell you the story of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. נמצא לפי זה כי אם הכהן רואה שהחוטא עדיין לא שב בתשובה, somebody is sinner, came to the, to, to the Mishkan, and he wants to make, but the Kohen, see, he doesn't make really תשובה. It's not, it's not really good. אז הוא אומר, he has to rebuke him. And he tell him to make תשובה, sincere תשובה, otherwise it's a waste. But how he has to make it? Remember what he's not allowed to do? To drink wine. He has to do it quietly or loud. Quietly. When you rebuke somebody that he is making a scene, it's good to do it loud or quietly? Why quietly is important? So you don't get embarrassed. If you do it loud, you embarrass him. 
The whole idea when you give a musar to, to your friend, to your children, to your grandchildren, not to embarrass him. It says, You should rebuke your friend. If I see my friend making a sin, I have to tell him. But it's not question what to tell him, how to tell him. Sometimes the way you talk, Valo, tisal of head. If you embarrassed him and you tried to make tikkun, is that you are the sinner? So remember. So when you make something, when you give a musar to somebody, we have to make it quietly, like the kohanim, quietly. Lot albin panabarabim. You cannot make your face white when you embarrass somebody. You know his face is very white. Do not do not do this. Do it quietly, secretly, nicely. And then maybe, maybe by Ezrat Hashem. Why, what, do you know what the sinner should do? The sinner should do, he take, let's say, he bring a cow. Nahon? So what is the most important when you make tshuva? You know what, the, according to Rambam? is the vidui. vidui. You know what is vidui? vidui? Yes. The confession. confession. He said, he put the two hands on the two horns, and he said, when he said, you know what to say, you know, he said, I did this, Ashamnu, Bagadnu, Gazalnu, Dibarnu. He made, he said, Hashem, please forgive me for all my sin. Nahon? Do you know how we, all of us, how we create lawyers? I'm talking, you know, defense attorney, and he, there is prosecutor. Who is better, the, the defense attorney or the prosecutor? The defense. The defense. Do you know how you create defense attorney? Mitzvot. 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 And how you create prosecutor? Sin. Averot. So every now you study Torah, you know how many angels, a defense attorney you created? Many said. As Adam now, because the prosecutor is the Satan, he brings the, the Malach, the Malach of death, the angel of death to destroy you. It's all. But if you make a mitzvah, it's the opposite. I bring the attorney. Look what he says in Pirkei Avot, line 13. Ha'oseh mitzvah ahad, kone lo praklit ahad. You make one mitzvah, you created an attorney. Defense attorney, one. Sanegor, it's called in Hebrew. Va'over avera ahad, but if you make one sin, you buy for you kategor ahad. So, ora ha'im, kodei seyem. He said, kone lo kategor, you buy kategor prosecutor, Meaning Malach Mashhit, angel that can destroy you. We know Malach Mashhit she nivra min averot. Now who created the angel, the Malach Hamashhit? Me, the sinner. He said, "Nichnas." So the Malach is entered to my system, to our system, the sinner, and he make me make another sin. You know how we said in Hebrew, "Avera goreret, avera." Sin leads to another sin. That's what the Malach Hamashit, the Satan, doing to us. Lachen tziva kadosh baruchu lachet lachotel lavi korban. You know what happened when I make, I bring the korban? Well, I smoke bechol kocho and I put my two hands on the head of the korban and I make the vidui. You know what happened during the vidui? Listen, listen, line two. Ki al yedez ze by making the vidui. You know who is inside my system now? Do you remember who, who entered in without permission? The Malach, the Satan. But when I make the vidui, I take out the Malach out of my system. And you know where is he going? Straight to the fire of the altar. I burn and make mangal, a barbecue. He said, he said, you see the process? The process, I created the prosecutor. I pray the Satan inside me by making sin. Now when I come and I want to make tshuva, I put the horn and I make Hashamnu Bagadnu Gazanu, I make real tshuva. So slowly, slowly, the Malach getting out of my system, I becoming pure, and then the angel, the Malach HaMashit, falling inside the midst of the fire of the altar, and he is consumed by the fire. Look how important it is to make tshuva. That's why the Kohanim do not drink wine because everything is quietly. All this, what I told you now, 
is quietly. If you see that if he sees the sinner not doing it sincerely, he's trying to convince him nicely to do it sincerely. He's helping him really, really, you know, to make tshuva and to be clean out of this system. To take this, is, you know, the Malach HaMashchit. Now, but the Leviyim, Omrim Shira la Korban. Now, after the, the Malach HaMashchit, he is really consumed by the fire. Who is really giving the music? You know, the music is the Leviyim. Now the Leviyim, but you have to do to be in good mood to drink wine. That's why the Leviyim are allowed to drink wine and the Kohanim do not drink wine. Because the Leviyim is really Midat Adin. And why they making, how they make Midat Adin, Midat Rahamim? By singing. When you sing to Hashem, you know what you do to the Din? You make the Din sweet. You sweeten the Din. And the Din changed to be Rahamim. Shira singing is always good. Shira Lashem, not stupid song. You know, when you make the Shira Lashem, is always make the sin, you know, you make the din rahamim. You sweeten the Rabbi din. Sorry. Rabbi Saidi, I'm sorry. So when the Kohanim were in their homes, had they not made Kiddush? When they are home? They are home, they're not the Beta Mikdash. They are so loud when you worship God in the Mishkan. Oh, oh okay. So they in the Mishkan, when they worship for the public. But if they are home, they are different, different bargain completely. We're talking about that Hashem, but Mikdash. The Kohanim didn't make Kiddush Babayit. They didn't have Kiddush Babayit. They called by Mishkan, but Beta Mikdash. Okay, now, after we know, we know now after, uh, you know, why Hava, why she has to make the Tikkun quietly, why the man has to make the Tikkun loud. I would like to go to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. We are very close to the end. Beautiful. Now, do you remember we say, so now Shabbat is so holy that we have to be careful what we take out from the mouth. You know, we said that many people are very strict about kashrut. Very strict what they put inside their mouth. Very strict, but they're not very strict what they take out from the mouth. You know, to eat glad kosher, to eat kosher, 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 but tok it's ara, it's, it's, it's a cocktail. You know, it's mixed up, it's kilayim. You make sin and mitzvah together. But we have to be careful what we have to take out. Now, the question is, on Shabbat, can I talk business? No. no. How do you know? Look, it says in the, the Kiddush, we say, When you talk, When you speak, you speak about Shabbat, about the parasha, about the Gmarash, sing Shabbat song, Birkat Amazon. But don't talk about business. Don't talk about... Even, even your clothes should be different. The clothes we are wearing for Shabbat is different than any other day. The, 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 the way we walk on Shabbat is different. We're not allowed to run on Shabbat. You know, it says, you have to walk nicely on Shabbat. And of course, when we talk, it says, V'daber davar. Now, listen to this short story, beautiful Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. The mother of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, she likes to talk. Okay? But Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, he, he knows that you know, it's not good to talk on Shabbat too much. Especially the woman that she made the, the sin because she was talking. How could he tell his mother now? His mother, you know, you have to respect her. So what he said, Imosha Rabbi, Hamishtaya she was talking many things, many words not related to Shabbat. Amarla, so Rabbi Shimon says, Yom Shabbat, Ayom Yom Shabbat. He didn't say he must stop talking. He said Ayom Yom Shabbat. Immediately she was quiet. What she understood? She cannot allow to speak. Can, but how he was very polite to her. He was very polite. He didn't say, Ima, you're talking too much. He said, Yom Shabbat. That's it. He gave her a hint nicely, and she was quiet. And that's what they say. You know, he said, how be careful. And especially when he knows that, you know, the Chava, she initiated the sin. That's why she made Adlakat Nerot Besheket. So, so look how much we have to be careful on Shabbat. Haresh Aviv Over Al Divret Torah. 
Now, if your father is violate the Torah, Ali Omar lo Abba, Abba, avarta al divre Torah, you have sinned, you violate the Torah, has ve shalom. Abba, you know, in the Torah says, you know, by clue, it says, you know, this, this you should do. If the other, the father will understand the hint nicely, he will be fixed. But you cannot talk not nice to your father or to your mother. You have to be very polite. If you are with chutzpah, say it, you goofed big time. The, the respect to the, you can, you can tell the mother and the, the father and nicely. Eli, he said, Shabbat ayom. And now that's Rabbi Shimon is teaching us how to talk to our parents. If has shalom, they are not following the rules. Now the Shabbat was insulted. Why? He said, "Zachor et Yom Shabbat lekodesh." Nachon, Amrat Torah lifnei line sixteen. Ribonos shel olam, she can serve Israel laaretz. When we go to Eretz Israel, not in the midbar, are we going to work? Absolutely yes. Are we going to have army? Absolutely yes. Are we going to have factories, schools, hospital? Yes. And we're going to have kibbutznikim, farmers? Yes. He said, "Zeh." So we. So the Shabbat said to Hashem. This one is running to his vineyard. And there, this one is running to his field. What about me? Shabbat. What are we doing on Shabbat? You know what we're doing on Shabbat? Tell me, what, what, if your husband is in business and he's working very hard, what day he can study? Shabbat. 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 He said, there, the Shabbat, I'm going to give you something else. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, the Torah was complaining. Who will study with me? He said, I'll give you Shabbat. Shabbat is going to study. Now, so that's all the people, the Baalei Batim, they are so busy during the week. At least on Shabbat, go to the Shorim and study. That's the main purpose of Shabbat. And the Zivug is between Shabbat and Torah. Torah and Shabbat getting together and Am Israel studying Torah. Now, do you remember now? I would like this is what I like the most. Nichnas Yain Yatsasod. What is Yatsasod? We learned Yatsasod. If you are drunk, you give up all your secret. Nachon? Yes. No. So, what we said, what we doing on Shabbat? Study Torah. Study Torah and drink wine. Nachon of the Kiddush. You know, my Yatsa. Now, the Torah is how many categories we have the Torah? Pardes, you remember what is Pardes? Yes. Pshat, Remes, Drash, what is the last one? Sod, if you study Torah and Shabbat, the Sod is coming out from the Torah, not from you. You reveal the Sod of the Torah. You see what is so beautiful? He said, we learn always, we say, Soda, if you're drunk, you know, you to drink too much, I'm giving my secret. No, no, the Torah, when you study again, I always emphasize, not too much. But enough to be happy, enough to be in a mood to study. So when you study and you are really after Shireh Shabbat, after Parashat Shavuot, and you study Torah, you are said ya nichnas yain, tamachnis yain to sing and to be happy. Yatsa sod, hasod shel la Torah yotze. Hasod shel la Torah. shel la Torah. That's the big chidush. I hope you've learned with you what I have learned. Say. Now, why we said also, now which part of my, my body should make tshuva after the sin? You know, which part of my body? I don't have to guess heart or brain or whatever it is. He said that every piece of my organ, every piece of my system is part of the sin. I am one human, nachon? I am one body. So how, when I do loud, when I pray loud, when I study loud, Okay, what is this doing to all? What's the difference between somebody who study quietly or somebody studying loud? Which one is better? Loud. Loud. Why loud? Because everyone there is around you. First of all, if you do loud, your memory should be better. By the way, one of the things is for Alzheimer and dementia is to study, to read loud. Study loud. It's helping the memory. Helping a lot the memory. And now when you study, you know, when he said he is study, you know, said loud. I said, why be called Ram? Why I have to do Ram? When I do loud, is not only my mouth, is my heart, is my tendons, 
Every part of my body is part of the loud, the loud of it, in spite of the fact that only one sound coming from my mouth. But when I'm talking to you right now, what, what I feel in my hand, I feel I'm part of the shiur. I'm jumping and I'm moving and my body is moving. The whole body is moving. So when I do loud, is the whole, all the movement, all the organs, every, everything is part. That's why you have to learn loud and not, you know, not to be quiet. It's not the oil. They say, I, one Talmud was Rabbi Eliezer. Ken? I know Rabbi Eliezer. He was studying always quietly. He was genius. You know what happened to him? After three years, he forgot everything he has learned. After three years, he said, you know, he said, you know, you always said, you have to do loud. You know Bruria? Yes. Who is Bruria? The smartest woman. On the, on the, she yeah. saw one of her students, of her husband, were doing quietly. <laughs> the, the Midrash said something, he said, she kicked him. She said, what are you doing? You think you're doing something good? She, she rebuked him. She said, how could you study quietly? You will never remember what you have studied. Bruria. You know, she gave it Musar to one of the Talmudim. He said, you have to do it loud. And he did accept what she said to him. You know, because she's right. Because it says in Mishle, Ki hayim hem, life le mozaehem. Al tikre le mozaehem, ele le mozaehem He said, you know, when every word you take out from your mouth and it's loud, it's more stable. It's staying much, much for longer. That's why he said in Mechsech and Megillah, when you work Torah, you have to work very hard. If you study, the, you understand the Torah very easy, it's not going to stay forever. You know, do you remember he said, Yagati umatsati tamin, you ever heard this statement? If you work very hard, he said, you know, if you work very hard and you did not find what you wanted, don't believe. If you found something and it didn't work very hard, don't believe. Yagati umatsati, I work very hard and I found out. Tamin, believe. That's going to stay forever. So he said we have to be always to work very hard. One of the things that you have to worry very hard is really, really to say loud, to work loud. And I'm going to conclude the shiur. Im tashim mi shabbat raglecha. Mimetzo hefzecha vedaber davar. So my dear Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said to Hashem, why you did not create two mouths? You know why he said? He said, why you need two mouths? Can you guess why he needs two mouths? He said, one mouth for Shabbat and one mouth for your mouth. He said, no, I'll give you one mouth and you control your mouth. <laughs> you have to say, okay. He said, you know, when you see your children coming, you know, you are in, especially in Panama, most of the people, a lot of people in business. So when they're getting together, the family on Friday night, automatically by nature they're going straight to the business we have nicely not not nicely nicely to say what two words we have to say Shabbat Shabbat Ayom that's nicely Shabbat Ayom they will understand say Shabbat Ayom say Dvar Torah Be'ezrat Hashem B'zchut HaShabbat B'zchut HaShabbat that's why I decided to share with you this I say I hope you enjoy this topic like you know when you know what I say, said I have to share with you this one, because it's not, it's for Shlom Bayit. Uh, Rene, I don't know if Rene is today in the shul. When I was in yeah. Panama, when I was in Panama, I know we had many young couple with crisis of Shlom Bayit. Many, many of them. Today, yeah. we have to teach the new generation. Be'emet hadlakat nerot, kiddush el Shabbat, shmirat Shabbat, is a sgulab duka, is a big sgula for Shlom Bayit. Sometimes there is some problem with your own children and you do not know even. You know why you do not know? Because your son or your daughter do not want to get to pain, to give you pain. And they keep it to themselves. So if you feel something wrong, you don't say, you know, my dear daughter, my dear, tell me what's wrong. Just say Shabbat. Tell him about the Shabbat. Say, what is the Sgula for Shmirat Shabbat, for Kedushat Shabbat, for Shlom Bayit? He said the wife to light the candle, you know, sadly, the men can share, and she read Shabbat and divre Torah be Shabbat, guarantee, guarantee that I'm not saying automatically we will have Shlom Bayit, but the Shlom Bayit will be much better than it was before Shabbat. And that's Shabbat. Be'ezrat Hashem, the Shabbat will protect all the people, all the soldiers, 
all the kidnap, all the pzoin, you know that all of us, he said, will see the Mashiach Tzidkenu b'merabi amenu amen. 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 Amen.